everyone, it's Monday and you know that after school I release videos. But today I'm going to give you 10 English hacks which will hopefully help you with your English studies. The other thing is that my competition for the upcoming VC Study Guides Autumn Workshop has finished. So the winner will be announced right at the end of the video. So stay tuned. One, do mind maps. Mind maps are one of the best ways for you to visually collate the information in one spot. When you read an entire book, especially if it is a long book that is around 300 pages, Wuthering Heights anybody, then it becomes quite hard to remember the events in sequence or even to remember the events at all, unless you've read it about a hundred times. So reading books over and over again is fine, but potentially it's not the most effective way. If you just start writing things down, putting thought to paper, it really is one of the most active ways that you can learn. When you first start studying a text, my recommendation is to have an A4 page, then start to create a mind map with everything that you know, that will help you understand where your missing gaps are in knowledge and then that will help you know, okay, I need to work on this particular theme or this particular character. Number two, teach your parents the text. So one of the best ways of learning, and I will repeatedly say one of the best ways, but seriously, one of the best ways of learning is to teach your parents. It is much different learning a text than teaching a text. It's a way of testing you to see how much you know about the text. And when your parents ask you, oh, but why did that character do that? Or, oh, I'm not too sure about this part. Why did this happen? With those type of questions, that might actually make you think, oh, you know what? I've never really thought of that before. before. So that also helps you to then realize again where your gaps in knowledge are and then you can work on it. Number three, highlight your text in different colors. I've mentioned this before in a previous video. However, if you're not doing this already, please start doing it ASAP. There's no point highlighting a whole book in yellow because when you flick through your book trying to find that one specific quote, how are you going to find it? Only when you separate your pages into different colors, we then think to yourself, oh, the theme of love is in pink. So I'm just gonna flip to the pages that have pink on them because it's gonna make it 10 times quicker and also just easier for me as well. Number four, one of the best ways of learning vocabulary is learn vocabulary from the book itself. I think one of the biggest aims for all students is to learn vocabulary. And while you can go out and start reading articles and start reading different books because Anything to do with reading would absolutely help you. If you're unsure of where to start off, then start from your book itself because generally the book will give you a lot of nice vocabulary that will fit perfectly into your essays. Number five, rather than reading your book a hundred times and think, oh my gosh, the more I read, the better I'll get. Once you've read it or once you've read it a couple of times, start reading different sources about your text. So whether that's going online, having a look at articles that review your particular text, have a look at different study guides that talk about your text. Just read as much as you can about that text because that's how you're going to open up your interpretation and your understanding of the book itself. Number six, studying a film. If you are, again, don't watch it a hundred times over and just think, oh, you know, each time I watch it, it's just about an hour and a half. That's pretty easy. I'll fit in an hour and a half here and just watch it casually. One of the best things that you can do is to dedicate yourself to one really intense viewing of your text. So what that means is rather than just watching it through, which can lead you to passive learning, be active about it. Every single new scene, pause. Once you've paused, have a look. Have a look at the camera angles. Have a look at the mise-en-scene. Have a look at the costumes. Have a look at the lighting. Done that, next scene. Pause go again. Next thing, pause, go again. This may seem really draining and a really tremendous task in which it is because if you're pausing every time, it's not going to take you an hour and a half. It would probably take you a full day. So with something like this, treat it as a project and do it over many different days or even weeks leading up to your SAC or exam. Number seven, when you're correcting your essay, read it out loud. It's very hard to mark your own essay because you obviously wrote it. And so when it comes to editing, a lot of the times you can't pick up your own errors and that's absolutely okay. But you know what can help you with your errors? Your ear. So when you're thinking and you're writing on paper, have you ever accidentally skipped a word and then just realized like, oh my gosh, I don't know why I wrote that or, oh, I can't believe I skipped that word. It's because in your mind you've done it, but not necessarily connected it with your hand. But when you force yourself to read out loud, it's really, really surprising how well your ear works as a replacement teacher in a way. Guys, just try it. I know it sounds so silly and trust me, when I got taught this, I was like, 
okay. But honestly, it's one of the things that helped me improve drastically and I even do it today. When I mark my students' essays, I'm always reading it out loud because when you read out loud, your ear picks up a lot more than your head does. Number eight, when you're memorizing quotes, don't just write quotes on a full A4 piece of paper and just go to yourself, okay, I'm just gonna sit down and memorize all of these 30 quotes now. One, two, three, four, five, six. How are you going to memorize that? It's gonna be so boring and it's gonna be so draining. What you should do instead is apply those quotes. So when you start practicing writing, or even if you do plans, write those quotes down that you think work in really well. It's only when you start applying those quotes into the context of the situation, so writing the essay or writing a plan, do you actually absorb it much more than just staring at a piece of paper or your laptop and just going, funny business or women's career, the things you drop along your way, the things you drop on your way up the ladder so you can move faster, the things you drop on your way up the ladder so you can move faster. Uh, number nine. I can't, I can't push down this pinky, but number nine. If you're struggling to understand the context of a particular text that you're studying, so if it's set in 1950s or if it's set in the American dream, if you're really struggling to get the hang of it or if you just want to know more, go ahead and learn it. And one of the best things that I use was Crash Course on YouTube. It's a, just a really cute and simple way of accessing that information in a way that's engaging for you as well. 10, fetch ideas from your friends. So. With your friends, go through prompts together and it'll surprise you that you might respond to a prompt in a certain way, but your friend might have responded in a completely different way. And whilst it might not be the way that you want to go about it, it's still nice to know what the different ideas are out there and how people can just look at a prompt and just have completely different perspectives or understanding of that prompt. English is a subject where the more ideas you have, the better and healthier it is for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed those 10 tips. They are a combination of some of the techniques that I personally adopted along with some other techniques that I've seen other students adopt, which have turned out really well for them. Competition time! Firstly, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to everybody who joined in on the competition. There were so many of you and I'm absolutely so flattered that you guys are wanting to join the workshop. There are only one of you did win, so the winner, I'll pop down right here. Congratulations, and if you are the winner, please shoot me a message on the VC Study Hides Facebook page. For those of you who weren't able to secure that free spot, don't worry, each of you have been sent a link to a special VIP access, so hopefully even if you didn't win, I will still get the opportunity to meet you and to teach you. If you guys enjoyed this type of hack video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll create some more hack style videos in the future. Subscribe if you haven't already and comment below if there's anything you would like me to touch base on in the future. Other than that, I just wanted to let you guys know that at the start of the year, I was doing weekly videos released on Monday. However, workload has really increased since school has started and I'm tutoring a lot again. Unfortunately, it's just a lot of workload. So I am only going to be releasing a new video every fortnightly Monday. So don't worry, I'm not disappearing, but I just wanted to let you guys know that. Okay, by doing this, it will also give me more time to create better videos for you guys rather than just rushing through and just trying to churn out videos on time every Monday. So yes, fortnightly Mondays, I will see you guys in a fortnight. See you, bye. I'm actually doing a Q&A of some of my tutors who work with me at BC Study Guides. So we all achieved a study score of 45 or higher.